So welcome everyone and thank you for being here today. I would like to acknowledge that we are within the territory of the Shishop First Nation and uh, thank you all for being here. I know uh, I know it's exciting times and lots going on, so uh, it's always great to see an audience uh, when uh, we're in our summer. So, thank you. Um, to start off, uh, we are going to um, adopt our agenda. Uh, there's one item I would like to add on there, and we'll put it. Um, we're going to put it uh, just in front of reports, um, just after our presentation and delegation. We will. Uh, we will have, I guess we'll call it, um, we'll call it maybe 3A and we'll do it as a water supply update um, because I know there's some members in our audience that may leave after the 101 presentation, but I know they'd like to stay for the water supply update. Um, so, <laughs> so with that, um, I would like to ask for a motion to approve the agenda as amended, please. So moved and seconded. Any further additions um, from directors? Anything else you'd like to add in? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Motion carries. Okay, so we have our regular board meeting minutes of June 27th, 2019, Annex A, pages 1 through 13. May I have a motion to receive and adopt, please? So moved and seconded. Are there any um, uh, errors, omissions, additions, subtractions, uh, Director McMahon. Did you want to pull the item on page six, recommendation eight, or am I on the right report? Is that the board minute service? Sorry. Um, which recommendation were you looking, the green waste, or was it, no? The single use plastics. It's single use plastics, uh, recommendation number eight on the single use plastic ban consideration. Um, Yes, we can, uh, we will pull, uh, let's actually, um, we can't, pull, we won't pull that out, but we'll discuss it right here, if you'd like, while we're, because we've got it on the motion on the floor. Um, and that was in particular uh, to the um, implementation, the implementations, um, I just can't speak today. Uh, the uh, province-wide regulations to reduce single-use plastics and disposable plastic banning. Um, so that's on page six of the agenda package. And um, it, did you want to address anything with it first, Director McMahon, or? Yeah. Okay. Um, so um, I'm going to ask, this is going to be a process question for staff first, I guess, because it is part, it, it is a recommendation that has been already um, gone through a board meeting and um, and been approved by the board. If this is something that we would like to bring back to consider again prior to going out on um, for a full recommendation, um, uh, our interim CAO, can you comment on what the process would be on that if to reconsider a recommendation, please? So I was just conferring with staff to make sure that the, act, the uh, recommendation had not yet been actioned. Okay. Um, so the motion could be brought back for further discussion. I mean, the, the recommendation has been adopted. These are the minutes. At this time, you're looking to adopt the minutes as uh, correct. Okay. Um, which is which is what they are. So if we want to bring back something, then we can bring it back maybe later, either in this meeting or in another business a business arising from the minutes and right. unfinished there, business. And there are okay. different options to do that. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we will do that. So I, we have a motion on the floor to ad uh, receive and adopt the minutes as correct. And uh, all those in favor? Motion carries. Okay, so business arising from the minutes and unfinished business. Uh, so let's go to recommendation number eight, which is single-use uh, plastic bans. I'm going to go to Director Beamish because I know they have something coming up through the town of Gibsons. Or uh, just to refer, I, I received an email from a CAO this morning. Uh, basically, it was a news item. It says the BC Court of Appeals sides with plastic bag industry in Victoria case. So I think that we might want to take a look at that, um, the implications of that. And basically what they said is that, uh, and, and I'm again reading from a, a news item, said the appeal court decision found about the bylaw found that city's definition of the bylaw purpose was not consistent with its effects. And um, they, 
I guess Victoria is now considering its next steps in terms of its bylaw. So we may want to look at how we move forward. Uh, with the uh, Town of Gibsons, I did uh, give a notice of motion uh, to Council for our next meeting that uh, to follow a similar bylaw as Victoria and Saanich and a few other places now, which is uh, prohibiting the single-use plastic bag at the checkout counter. And so that um, we'll be watching this, but I'm not sure that I want to do anything differently at the present time because ours was intended to come into effect in, in uh, January 1, 2020. Uh, it allows us to still have that consultation information with the community. Uh, some places, for example, IGA currently already do not provide a single-use plastic bag at the checkout counter. It is possible to do that. We want to encourage businesses. Uh, we had a business walk earlier this year, or in June actually, and uh, almost 201. Uh, everybody agreed that um, they could work without single-use plastic bags. They needed time to kind of uh, adjust and get rid of the stock that they have, but they could move to paper and uh, or different products. And so that uh, I want to continue with our initiative. We don't have to, in effect, give forth reading to a bylaw. We can keep it on the table until till such time as uh, we need to either amend it or are able to proceed with it. So I think we're going to do that. So. Uh, any other comments on this item? Uh, Director McMahon, please. Yeah, we um, directed uh, that a letter be sent to the province uh, about reducing single-use plastics, but fundamentally this is a federal issue. So yes. we really should be writing to the Government of Canada. I, I realize that they've brought in some new rules, but it looks like there's no real teeth in, in what they're doing, and you know, we're, we're, at the, we're at the bottom end of the waste stream. Mm -hmm. It needs to be cut off from the top. So I see no reason why we shouldn't advocate federally. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to put this question back over to the uh, interim CAO. Um, if we would like to add on to this, would you like us to just do it underneath the motions? Or would you like us to do it now if we'd like to add on to another entity that we would also like to advocate to? Thank you. I think the simplest way is I don't think it's necessary to make any amendments to this particularly ado particular adopted recommendation. I think you can just make a subsequent motion that indicates you'd also like to advocate to the federal government. And for timing in this agenda, do you want us to take care of it right now or just later in the package with the motions? I think it's probably simplest to deal with it now. Perfect. Okay, so Director McMahon? I so move. Okay. Second. Second. Uh, Sherry, you have a <coughs> Okay. Any further comments or discussion on this piece? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you, and uh, thank you, everyone, for your indulgence in that and uh, taking care of it. Okay, any other unfinished business or business arising from the minutes of our last meeting? Okay, seeing none, we're going to go to presentations and delegations. And we have Robin Marriott from the Sunshine Coast Highway Society regarding support for the new Sunshine Coast Highway. Uh, prior to you beginning, I'm going to ask a motion to receive the, uh, the map and <coughs> the... Um, and the uh, 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 what do I want to what do I want to call that the uh, the, the proposed route there's two pieces of paper that were handed out prior to the moment meeting if I may have a motion to receive thank you and seconded okay all those in favor motion carries okay and mr. Marriott if you'd like to come up and turn your microphone on and thank you very much for being here today yep okay bill can you turn off your microphone please oh, sure. <coughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, good afternoon, directors, chair, directors. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to uh, present our case to you. Uh, in addition to the information we in the agenda we already sent out, um, just going to make a few comments about the Sunshine Coast Highway Society, and then i will uh, be happy to take a few questions if you may, if you have any. So, uh, evidence in the last week or two, we've had a 
sadly, we've had a few serious accidents on the highway, on road, well, road 101, as we call it, or uh, goat track 101, as, uh, as Chair Laurie Pratt has labelled it in the past. <laughs> In both cases, of course, the road was blocked for lengthy periods. There was the one at uh, the Watson Miller Hill, no, I think Half Moon Bay. Road was blocked. L there's limited alternative routes. People were stuck in their vehicles, as uh, regularly happens, as you know. And then in, also the issue of emergency vehicles getting to and from accidents is the big thing. So that highlights part of what we're saying. So clearly the current road is obviously inadequate for today's traffic volume. I think we've all noticed that over the last few years. And it's only going to get worse. I don't think it's ever going to get better. Traffic's going to continue to increase. So, And given the growth projections for the coast, construction of a new state-of-the-art state highway from Langdale through to Seashell, we feel is now needed. The suggested route for this highway would be to follow the existing power lines north of uh, the current road. That's in the map I, maps I gave you. One is a projection from 2009 that was done of the projected highway where it would go either north or south of the power lines. And the other one, of course, is a Google Maps just showing the general area of how it would go. So basically, with shorter predictable travel times, the positive impact on the environment and sustainability cannot be underestimated. So there will be less gas burned, more frequent transit service will be possible, greater efficiency for businesses. There are among the many benefits that would come from this. And uh, to echo, echo Director Tice's comments, the highway would be, in, would be an important fire break. Of course, uh, a new highway is not going to be cheap. We all know that. Um, we estimated it likely cost more than $200 million. But we believe that savings to residents and to all levels of governments make this project entirely affordable. Our society continues to attend public events. And we've had a lot of support. Every time we go anywhere, we have lots of interest and a lot of support. Um, we've been out, so we were at Canada Day Parade, of course, and uh, in the park afterwards, and we'll be at the um, the Sandcastle competition this coming Sunday. We'll have an information desk there. And we've had to purchase an extra thousand buttons. It's been so popular, so anyone wants, anyone wants a button, we have plenty, so we can hand them out. <laughs> so we're continuing to lobby our MLA and the Minister to ensure that they know the level of support that the highway has from residents and visitors alike, and from our local governments. Which of course is why we're here today. We're here to seek your, some, your formal support that the Sunshine Coast needs a highway. Thank you, and if any questions, I'm uh, happy to try to answer for you. All right, uh, directors, uh, questions uh, for Mr. Marriott and the uh and the Sunshine Coast Highway Society. Uh, Director Ties. Yeah, well, uh, first of all, thank you for your passion and, and thank you for, uh, for bringing this matter to the board. I think it's, uh, I think it's time that we talked about it and I, I think it's, uh, it's uh, um, our, our highway is certainly uh, not uh, the optimal, in the optimal condition it should be in right now. Um, I, I have some concerns about the connection between the petition that was put out and the um, and the mission statement that your organization has, and how the petition neither mentions that uh, we need a spectacular scenic superhighway or uh, that uh, the uh, current route needs to be turned into a parkway and yet you cite the petition as a um, uh, as a, a supporting document towards your what your mission statement is 
So I'd like to know uh, how you can connect the two. Uh, initially, the petition is how we basically started um, with a group of us back a year and a half ago, I guess. We started out and we decided we need to petition the government for a new, as it says, for a, for a highway. So that was the word and we put together, we, we did it in, um, we, we talked to Nicholas Simons, the MLA, and we decided and we talked about it in the wording of it and how we could word it and how we could bring it to the provincial government. So that's how the petition came about. And then we collected signatures, of course, and we presented it back in March. But as we thought more of it, and we've basically, I think, we've moved on. That was our original idea, and it, well, it still is. That was what we, for the highway, a new highway. But we, we've moved on, and, and now we've, we've thought about it more, and we've formed this new highway committee, uh, society. And as we've thought about it, we've developed our ideas, basically, and the more we think about it, the more we realise that we really do need a new, a completely new highway. Um, so that it has just developed, one has developed from the other as we've moved on and new ideas have come in and new people have come into our society and that's kind of as we're moving forward, things are changing, I guess. You would have to say that way. Directors, uh, Director Hiltz? Sure, um, $200 million is a... Uh, a number. A number, yeah, exactly. And I mean, I'm, not, I'm obviously not an engineer. So. And, and so <laughs> um, what kind of timeline is, are you looking at as a, as a group? What's a, I mean, 5, 10, 15, 20 years? In turn, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of Vancouver Island Highway, and it took a long time to build and put a whole bunch of things into process. And, and what's kind of your vision of where this would, how long before something like that could happen? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> I honestly am not really sure. Um, obviously, the government would have to commit to it first anyway, so I don't know how long it would actually take to build. I mean, the fast we're concerned, the sooner we get it built, the better. That's the way we look at it. I think we'd say that. I don't think we can wait. Um, like I said, you know, we could, we could wait and then we end up leaving it to our children, grandchildren. And I think we need to act now and get it done, however long it takes. But I think now is the time to act. I think that probably answers that. I don't know if we have an exact timeline because, you know, we wouldn't really know until the government committed to it. Forward? Yeah, sure. I, I'm, there, there's this phrase, you know, like uh, Vancouver has gone through the viaduct and there's talking about how Seattle had a, a highway go through it and this idea that if you build a highway, you will just fill it with more cars. Is, is that factor into the discussion about that? If you're creating capacity, you'll just encourage more. No, I don't. I don't know. For me, I think the cars are already here. I mean, the commercial traffic and the cars are already on the coast. I mean, you, you can just look at the existing road. I mean, you can see the amount of traffic we have, and BC ferries are carrying more and more all the time. I think the traffic is already here. I don't think you're going to encourage more. I, I think you just be able to move it better, get it to where we want to go to. Um, this would be a lot better for the commercial traffic to be able to bypass and get to where they're going much faster, it must be much better for business instead of being stuck on our existing road as it is now. And I don't think the existing road is built for the traffic we have, for the, the heavy traffic we have, commercial traffic, um, things like that. And, and uh, Chapman Creek Bridge, for instance, is another issue. I see they're doing work on that in a moment next week, so it's going to be hold-ups there. But that's a really old bridge, and it's the only bridge over the creek. So... So I, I just think that's the traffic's already here, I think, and it's too much for what we have for the current infrastructure. Uh, directors, any further questions or comments? Director Tice? Yeah, uh, well, going back to public support of this highway, and, uh, you know, if you, you, know, you yourself said that the, the petition was something, uh, had, had a different... Uh, uh, had essentially was a different topic and it has, the, the idea has since evolved then. So your evolved idea has no formal community support. Um, there is, of course, a lot of informal support, um, but the petition, I don't think, actually speaks to the support for having a four-lane highway here. And without a more thorough community consultation as to what it is what we want and... Uh, and how we want it, I, I don't think I can I can support this highway 
I think there are many people from my jurisdiction, Roberts Creek, who would like to see a new highway. Absolutely. There's also a lot of people who don't. And there are many impacts a project like this would have. And to give you guys your support without outlining the impacts, informing and consulting the public would be premature and potentially not in the best interest of our community. So while I support the intention of the petition, I would have signed that petition. I can't support the mission statement of the Sunshine Coast 101 Committee at this point in time because I have not gotten the opinion of my constituents. And I don't think I can with good conscience say, yes, we need a new four-lane highway going across the top of Roberts Creek without talking to my constituents first and getting a more thorough consultation in this regard. Yeah, the only other thing I would say is that talking about public support, we have information. We've been running information tables at events and pretty much just about everybody we speak to says the same thing. We need a new, we need a highway. I mean, it's just everybody we talk to. I mean, we hardly ever come across, I've actually personally hardly ever come across anybody who's actually said no. I mean, that's just me. But for the amount of it on our tables, our information, it seems to me that the overwhelming support is for that. And then I know the coach reporter ran a question of the week when there was like 81 or 2 percent for it as well. So, I mean, you know, as far as we can see, there is support for it definitely on the coast, majority as far as we can see. Director Beamish. Thank you for your presentation. And, you know, I'm generally in support of the highway. I've written the minister in that effect. And I'm really concerned about the numbers of accidents and numbers of serious injuries and deaths on our existing highway. I do believe, though, we need to, what we need to do is have a broader community consultation. And much like we did with the water consultation, I thought that was a very effective conversation with the community and a way to get people out and talking about it because that heightens the awareness and might have some new ideas. Whether it's a lengthy four-lane highway or whether it's a two-lane highway with lots of passing ability and things of that nature, seeing what people actually want. The four-lane highways, of course, create higher speed limits and more serious accidents sometimes when they do occur. But look into the whole thing. I mean, generally, we do need something. We need an improvement and we need an alternative. And I'm in favor of that. But I'm also in favor of having this off the table here and more into the public where we participate in that conversation. Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, obviously, we'd be all for that. Yeah, obviously, that would be good. Yeah. Directors, any further questions? Andreas? Director Tice? Yeah, I just want to clarify that I am not against this highway. I just want to state for the record I'm not against this highway. I just feel like we need more public consultation to make sure that everybody, that we're doing this in the best interest of our community. Yeah, well, yeah, obviously, we agree. And unfortunately, we don't hold the purse strings or even the decision point on any of this. Yeah, so this is one of those pieces that if we want to put our position forward, we would need to advocate to a minister in that case, which the committee has done through the petition and the meeting they had with the minister. So I think we're a long ways from finding out. It's unfortunate. I drive the highway constantly because I'm between here and home and delivering children everywhere. And directors, any further questions or comments for the? Yes, Director Seegers. There is an ask in the letter that was attached. They are requesting that the Regional District Board provide formal support of their efforts to construct a highway or an alternate highway, I guess. 
And did you want to bring that forward as a motion? I'll make that recommendation. Okay. And do I have a seconder for that? Seconder? Okay. Any discussion on the motion that's on the floor? Director McMahon. I'm a little in the same camp as Director Tice on this one. We need a growth strategy. We have not looked at that yet. And this would be a piece of that growth strategy. Our road is woefully deficient. That's the kindest thing I can say about it. And it's got major safety issues. And some of those safety issues need to be addressed immediately. They can't wait for a new road. And the bridge over Chapman Creek being a good example. We need alternate routes in case of emergency. And this will also come into our emergency planning when we bring that forward. And that's another whole aspect of this that we should consider when we're looking at what do we want to see going forward. We did have a 2011 regional growth strategy. It may be time to look at that again. If you read it through, it's the graveyard of buried recommendations. I think there's only two recommendations in that whole report that have been actioned. And none of them, those were not the province of the province. We increased the transit service. And that's something that the SCRD could do. So, you know, carts and horses. Director Seekers and then Director Lamb. Yeah, I'll speak to this. At this point, there's no plan on the books here or provincially or anything else. This is just saying that we recognize there is an issue. And we're willing to put it forward to the province to say something needs to be done. That's all we're doing at this point. What is it going to look like? Where is it going to go? All of that has to be sorted out. That's down the road. So, I mean, I know in Seashell, we're totally in support of this. And I see the impact rurally as well through the all up and down the coast. We have had a number of, and we had a fatality last week, two weeks ago now. Two weeks ago. We've had a number of fatalities up and down the coast. I think it is time to signal to the province that as governments here on the Sunshine Coast, we know something has to be done. And we want them to look at it. The final result, who knows what that's going to be or when. But unless we signal that we want them to look at it, they're not going to. So I think as a regional board, this is something that will come up in our regional growth strategy. And this says that it is something that we want to be included. Director Lamb. I think we've had a lot of horses and carts today. And I think it's time we put the horse ahead of the game. And the most important thing here is to let the province know that we are, we want, we need to have some sort of a highway. So that at least they put it on the radar screen. And, you know, it's going to be one of these things. As soon as the province says, oh, maybe we need to put a road over there, then the consultation will start about how that road is built. But exactly what Director Seeger says, I'm 100% behind it. We've got to get Victoria. We've got to get them thinking that they need to support us. Thank you. Director Beamish. Yes, Chair. Have we requested a meeting with the Minister at UBCM to discuss this? We're discussing that at the end of the day today. Okay. Yes. So it's possible. It is possible. Thank you. What did I do? There we go. Director Lee. I'm 100% in favor of getting the conversation started with the province. If they know we're interested, they might come and have a look at some alternatives and some suggestions for us. And I think we need to get started. The sooner the better. The need is, the need for a second route is well recognized by everybody. All we're talking about is what does it look like. And that would be the design once they decide to do it. So I'm all in favor of saying we're in support of this. I'm going to look around at Director Hiltz. I agree on the conversation about what the conversation is. I look at the bypass. Phil Gillardy had it surveyed in 1960, 1965. 
Um, and I'm more concerned with the day-to-day -day operations and the safety issues that are happening now. So the conversation, I think, needs to happen. But uh, our, our emergency preparedness, we've been talking about the Chapman Bridge is, is, is a bottleneck. And that using forestry roads as an alternative and to have improved uh, maintenance on forestry roads as bypasses to get around and to, and to look at these more immediate solutions are like I'm less than five years is this highway, um, you know, Phil Gillardy was gone a long time ago, right? And uh, we've only got up to Stewart Road and that's uh, 50 years. So I'd like to see something kind of more concrete that we could talk to the province about. So I'm, to di I almost find it a bit of a distraction to talk about a four-lane highway opposed to something that's kind of, and when I hear a two million, $200 million, and uh, I'd like a highway, do I want to pay $200 million for it? Right? So there is limited funds. So, I, I, so I'm, I'm wondering about the targeting of the ask and looking at more on the practical side rather than the 50-year side. Um, that's, you know, I live just off of Stewart Road and I've watched that and bypass be constructed and it's a very slow process and we've been turned down over and over. But the conversation, I believe, so I'm not sh sure what the supporting letter should say. So that, that's kind of where I am. I'm going to go over to our interim CAO. Thank you, Chair. I just, uh, as a point of information, wanted to remind the board that there is a corridor study underway currently and the results are expected to the end of the summer, early fall. Uh, that may provide some additional insight. Okay, so that's the current corridor study that's going on right now. So, okay, uh, Director McMahon. So I'm going to suggest that maybe the way to go is to grab a minister at UBCM and then uh, write to the province when the corridor study comes out and we've got that hot in our fist. Uh, so that's just my suggestion. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor right now and I'm going to look over to Sherry to just, uh, if you could just tell us exactly what it is because we've been having some conversation since then. <laughs> So the initial motion was that the um, SCRD support, um, send a letter to the province indicating support for the construction of a highway. And then further to that, um, there were comments about uh, sending that letter once the corridor study is complete and also scheduling a meeting with the minister at UBCM to discuss the issue. Okay. So the initial motion is to provide support. So if we wanted to amend that to make it more clear then it would be to ask for a meeting at UBCM and um, along with the corridor study once completed. Mm -hmm. um, so we could make a possible amendment to that. I'll amend it. Okay. Uh, so moved. And um, who would like to second that? Uh, Director Lee, I see. Okay. So speaking to the amendment, um, did anyone want wish to speak to the amendment? Does anybody have any questions of Director Lamb? Just wondering if we should send the letter with the with the um, recommendations so that the minister has that in his lap when we meet with him. Her lap. Um, okay. Oh, okay, Director Seekers. I think timing is is an issue there. The study won't be done until after UBCM, so we won't be able to provide that prior. Okay. Okay, are there any questions or comments on the amendment that's on the floor? Is everybody clear on the amendment? That's good. Oh, Director Seegers? Okay, as to timing, um, if we meet with the minister at UBCM, we can indicate that we will be following up once this study comes through with a letter and implications for the further work on the highway and the proposed new route. Any further comments or questions on the amendment? Uh, Dr. Hiltz? Uh, just read it out, please. Over to Sherry. Okay. That a meeting with the Minister of Transportation and Infrastructure be scheduled at the September Union of BC Municipalities Conference and that a letter be sent to the province indicating SCRD support for construction of a highway on the southern Sunshine Coast once the corridor study has been released. Is everybody clear on that amendment? So any questions? Uh, Director Tys. I'm just wondering if we want to clarify that the letter will be drafted 
um, taking into consideration the corridor review rather than just saying, hey, let's let's have a highway. Um, so I think that there's a difference between those two. Okay, Direct, uh, Director Seekers. Thank you. I think what you're indicating is that we anticipate that the corridor review study will identify uh, shortcomings on our current route that we could then incorporate into the letter that we send to the minister. So am I hearing another amendment to our amendment? Or um, can I just, um, yes, Sherry. So the final and that clause, and that a letter be sent to the province indicating SCRD support for construction of a highway on the southern Sunshine Coast, incorporating considerations of the corridor study once it's been released. Okay, so I first off, I have an amendment on the floor. Before we amend that amendment, I like to clean up things. So I would like to first call the question on the amendment. The first, we haven't made the other amendment. I haven't let anybody move or second it. Okay, so we have an indication, though, that that will be amended. So I like to keep things clean. <laughs> so let's call the question on the first amendment, which is meeting with the, the minister at UBCM uh, with the corridor study and send a letter once the corridor study is complete. Is that correct? Okay, so that is the amendment that we are going to vote on right now. And then you have in your head what you want to vote. Okay. Okay, let's deal with this one first, please. Um, I'm going to call the question on this first amendment, please. All those in favor? Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Now, Director Seegers to amend that. As per Sherry. As per Sherry. Yes, please. And that a letter be sent to the province indicating SCRD support for construction of a highway on the southern Sunshine Coast, incorporating considerations of the corridor study once it's been released. Okay. So that's that new amendment. May I have a seconder? Seconded. Any further discussion on that amendment? I'm seeing none. I'll call the question. All those in favor of the amendment? Okay. So that amendment passes. Now, Sherry, can you read the full amended motion, please? And then we'll see if there's any further discussion. If not, I'll call the question. That a meeting with the Minister of Inf of Transportation and Infrastructure be scheduled at the September Union of BC Municipalities Conference and that a letter be sent to the province indicating a CRD support for construction of a highway on the southern Sunshine Coast incorporating considerations of the corridor study once it's been released. Okay. Is there any further discussion on that motion that's on the floor? The amended motion on the floor. Seeing none, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Would you like that? Uh, sure. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Are there any further questions for Mr. Marriott? Thank you very much for your presentation today. And uh, we'll uh, stick around for water and stick around until the end of the meeting. It doesn't go that long. We're a fun bunch. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here today. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we are going to go over to 3A on our agenda, and that is going to be our water supply update. Mr. Rosenboom, it's up to you. Thank you, Chair Pert. I think um, it's fair to say that from a water supply perspective, we are all were happy with the rain we received over the last several weeks. Uh, these rains were not predicted in the way we received them, as uh, the indication was that it was warmer and drier, and uh, it wasn't. Uh, the current state of our water supply is comparable with that of early July 2018, so about a year ago. In 2018, we still went to a stage four at the end of August, and the drought more or less continued until late October. It's currently only the second week of July, and long-term weather forecast is still for a hot and dry uh, remainder of the summer. This year, the intent is to avoid or delay as long as possible the implementation of a stage four water conservation regulation. Therefore, we will remain at stage two for now. Stage three. Stage three. Stage three. Thank you. <laughs> stage three for now. <laughs> the SCD would like to thank the community for the efforts to conserve the drinking water. Staff will be happy to answer any questions the board might have. 
that's an example of a verbal autocorrect. <laughs> Thank you for making that. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go over to Director McMahon first, please. Yes, I understood that staff had plans for uh, regular updates on the website um, of some sort to show the state of the reservoir, and I was just wondering what's happening with that. Thanks. Okay, over to staff. I will, let, I will look into that further. Um, in terms of updating on the website, uh, this statement will go also online this afternoon. Okay, uh, Director Seekers. I think what the community and the board are looking for as well are updates on uh, volumes that are being used, etc., so that the community knows, you know, yes, we are hitting the target, no, we are not hitting the target, right? So. I mean, I was the same thing. I went and it's raining. Okay, so now what's happening? I went to the website to say, what's it saying? And nothing. <laughs> so we want some information, please. I can. I was planning to provide more information, uh, more detailed analysis next week uh, at our uh, Infrastructure Services Committee meeting, but I will provide some information right now uh, from the top of my head. Um, it's very significant the impact um, that uh, the difference between last year and this year in terms of the community demand uh, during stage two and primarily also stage three in terms of water conservation. Um, compared to last year during the similar stages, um, the temperatures were also higher because we were later in the year, but we see a significant decrease in uh, demand primarily we feel during uh, due to the changes made in the drought management plan in terms of uh, what is regulated and what is not in the stages primarily the lawn watering as a result um, demand over the last several weeks uh, first two weeks of July uh, during the, when we had the rain events during the dry days the demand hovered between 14 and 15 million cubes a day uh, liters a day for 14, 15,000 cubes, which is um, as we were hoping that it would be. During the wetter days, of course, it went down because people were not uh, uh, watering their vegetables or their uh, ornamentals. Um, so it is, uh, it's hard for us to say how that will uh, be when the temperatures go more towards the mid-20s, uh, mid-20s, high-20s. Uh, but for now, the demand is really uh, as where we would like it to be. So that's very encouraging. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Director Hiltz. Um, yeah. In terms of, I, I'd kind of like a visual in terms of, is, is water going over the weir right now? Yes. Water is going over the weir. So no, nothing is being released through the valve then? No. Currently, there's no, uh, the lake is uh, full. There is uh, sufficient water in the creek. Um, actually more than sufficient at the moment. And um, yeah, we're in a good shape at the moment. So that's really the effect of the rain. It provided us, I think in total of uh, a week and a half where we did not have to release any water uh, manually from the lake. Okay, excellent. Uh, further questions, uh, Director McMahon. We should find a way to say thank you to the community for helping out because this could make all the difference. I'll say a big, huge thank you right here in front of the media if they would like to report that. That's, uh, that's really amazing. And um, I know we all know how frustrated our community has been over the last number of years. And to really embrace, um, they've, they've done a lot of embracing. And, um, and I know uh, a lot of the... Um, the regulations around water, lawn watering were not popular. I've, I've read Facebook. Um, um, but uh, it, it's a huge, thank you, Director McMahon, for saying that. It's, it's a huge kudos to the community for being on board with this. And thank you so much. And thank you for staff, too. So um, any further questions or comments on the water supply? Uh, Director Hiltz. I, I'm, I'm uh, um, as, as Good news as it is, um, I just want to remi remind people that last November was the latest that Chapman Lake had ever filled up. So mm -hmm. we still have a long ways to go, right? We're you know, into November. Yes. Yep. That's – thanks for bringing me back down. Oh, you're such a bummer. <laughs> 
No, that's right. Cautiously optimistic, yes. Um, but uh, but thank you so much to the community for being on board. So uh, any further questions or comments? Thank you so much. And looking forward to next week's infrastructure meeting. I know it's uh, Graham's favorite meeting of the of the SCRD. So. Um, and uh, we're, uh, we're really looking forward to uh, hearing a, a, a fuller update. That's awesome. Okay, so we are going to move on uh, to, uh, we have uh, some reports. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask the board to receive all the reports right now. So moved, seconded, all those in favor. Motion carries. Um, and then we're gonna move on to the Corporate and Administrative Services Committee recommendations numbers one, two, six through 10, 12 to 14, and 16 of June 27th, 2019. Uh, these are in Annex C or pages 61, or pardon me, 16 to 21 of your package. Uh, recommendations numbers three, four, five, 11, 15, and 17 were previously adopted. Um, before we move those as a package, do any of the directors wanna pull any of those out to discuss separately? Nope. Alrighty, so I'd like to motion to adopt those recommendations. So moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Uh, seeing none, all those in favor? Motion carries. We now have uh, 4A on our agenda, which is 21A and B of our package. Um, and those were from earlier today. We have three recommendations that came forward from our planning and community development committee um, earlier today. Uh, directors, would you like to pull out any one of those recommendations to discuss further at the board? Okay, seeing no, I will ask, move adoption and seconded. Seconded, all those in favor, motion carries. Next up, we have Annex D, uh, General Manager, Corporate Services, Chief Financial Officer, uh, Rural Areas Grant and Aid for Roberts Creek Mandela Society. Um, over to staff to present, please. Yes. Thank you, Chair Pratt. So this is just really an administrative um, item to uh, proceed with payment ahead of the general August 1st um, deadline that we usually do for grants and aid. So this community is requesting their funds sooner than um, the deadline. Thank you. Okay, and I'm going to look to directors to see if there's any comments. I'll go to our director from Roberts Creek first, uh, Director Ties. Nope, we're, we need that paint now, so uh, let's get her done. Would you like to move the recommendation on page 22 then? Yes, that, that, please. Okay, so moved and seconded. Any further conversation on this discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Motion carries. Okay. Uh, we don't have any communications. Um, we dealt with a motion already uh, earlier under our business arising. Uh, we have no bylaws today. We do have director's reports though, which is so exciting. Um, and um, I'm going to take the chair's liberty of starting off because I usually leave myself for last. Um, so uh, I just have a few things that I wanted to uh, report on from uh, Half Moon Bay. Um, uh, and it, I've had a number of constituent meetings and uh, that, which have been very interesting as I'm finding out more and more of what's going on within our area and that's been really exciting. Um, this morning uh, uh, we had a uh, meeting with the uh, with Seashell Council which was uh, fantastic. It was a nice breakfast meeting. Seashell Nation Council, sorry. Thank you. Um, and uh, that was a really good conversation to have and um, it was, uh, it's nice to be building that relationship. Um, Canada Day uh, ha has happened since the last, um, uh, the last meeting we've had and um, my Canada Day started on June 30th on Thormanby Island which was when they do their Canada Day celebrations and uh, that, was, that was a lot of fun. Um, it's, uh, it was a beautiful day. They have a great community celebration there and uh, it's, um, it's a really neat place to be. Um, and then the next day, July 1st, I, I happily avoided the dunk tank <laughs> in seashells. Um, I, and I didn't know it until I actually arrived to sign in for my time. And they had already replaced me because I had said that if we were in stage three, I was not going to be, I did not want to go in the junk tank and they, uh, they heard me, but they forgot to tell me. So I still showed up and 
and uh, paid a lovely donation to the Rotary Club of Seashell. So thank you so much for that. Um, I've never been so grateful to not see my name on a list ever. <laughs> Uh, I think my tailbone is still sore from May Day up in Pender Harbor, so um, I was very happy. Um, one really exciting event that's happening this weekend is the Half Moon Bay Country Fair, and that'll be on Saturday and Sunday at Cooper's Green, um, and uh, just day-long country fair events, and including a dance on Saturday night, and I believe there's still tickets available. Um, and then um, I'm just going to conclude my report with, um, I'd like to just uh, offer a huge word of thanks to um, to someone who's, it's going to be her last board meeting um, for our board. She's still around for committee meetings, but um, we are bidding adieu to uh, Ms. Legault as she uh, as she's leaving us. And um, and I just, uh, just wanted to um, give my appreciation and gratitude and um, You've been very helpful, well, for a number of years because, of course, um, I got to know you when I had to um, take the oath of office, I think, or swear an oath when I was running for a school trustee a number of years ago. So, um, uh, so um, it's, uh, um, I've always had the most uh, uh, admiration and respect for you, and um, I know you're going to do an amazing job over there. You've done an amazing job here. Uh, you will be sorely missed here, um, and it's with just deep gratitude that i um, just like to ask everyone just to give her a big round of applause and say thank you. And, um, and with that, because I'm tearing up a bit, so I'm just going to move on and go down to Director Lee and uh, find out what's going on in Pender Harbor, please. Great timing. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I attended a Ruby Lake uh, AGM, it was a Ruby Lake Owners Association. It actually was, uh, it was fun, great bunch. Quite a few people there, 30, 40 people. I found out that they have their own uh, fire pumps and their own hoses all set up, ready to uh, do anything that's needed with the fire. And uh, they were discussing the fire saving their property, which was quite interesting to see. Um, they, uh, they actually are supportive of the logging in the area, but they would like to have the conversation so they understand exactly what's happening. But a uh, very forward-looking bunch. Um, I was really surprised how busy the lake was. Of course, there's Don, Dan Bosch Park there, and it's always full. Cars parked alongside the street. The launching ramp itself there was full of people, and you could see people out in the islands picketing, picnicking. It was just just great place, that Ruby Lake. Um, the other thing we did is uh, we finished the uh, work at Forest View Cemetery. Volunteers had uh, taken upon themselves to clean up the cemetery, and um, they had uh, put up a new fence, cleaned up the yard, put up a new fence. They put up a nice new gate. And the SCRD come and assisted in putting in the water. They put in a new meter for us. And then we extended that to a yard hydrant. So now we can water the flowers, which was quite nice. So very, very happy with the community and the things that's been done so far. So, so even, the, even the cemetery is on metered water? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that much water use in there, though. <laughs> You can it's not be a very dead. active, yeah. <laughs> you can be dead, but you can't escape metering. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many jokes right now, and I shouldn't. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Director Lee. Uh, we're going to go over to the town of Gibsons and Director Beamish. If you would like to give us an update on the last couple of weeks, please. Thank you. Yes, I, I, uh, we had Canada Day as well. It happened also in Gibsons. And uh, uh, so, uh, a little, little softer, a little lighter. We had cake. All of council was present. Uh, Stafford Lumley, our uh, deputy mayor, represented me as I was coming off a mountain and Seashelt, which was great. Uh, I did it with Seashelt Squamish Mountain. I arrived uh, late, but it was uh, very good, good entertainment, and uh, lots went on there. Um, we had a... Um, uh, meeting our, at our meeting this week, uh, we gave first reading to a bylaw on uh, affordable housing project on Shaw Road. This is one that you may recall. We had a 
initially done one down in the Charmin Forest uh, area, and then we moved that last uh, spring up to further up Shaw Road by Christian Village. So they had a very um, interesting plan there for up to 70 units. The first phase is 40 units, so that uh, we're, we've given that first reading and we'll be proceeding to public hearing and uh, um, well, public consultation first and then second reading and public hearing. So that's going to be a very interesting project as it goes through. Um, I also last night I attended a Touchstone uh, open house presentation on the Gospel Rock project. And that was my first time I've sat down and really looked at that project. And if you get a chance to go into the um, information booth uh, center that they have there next to the a &W, um, remarkable um, work that they've done in terms of uh, modeling that project. So you can actually see the preservation area and the trail areas and all of the units that they're proposing to go in there. Um, and so that's a, it's really worth taking a look at it to get a good understanding of the scope of that project. And it's very interesting. And uh, we've been working with our staff at a staff workshop earlier this week, and we'll be doing more of that. And, uh, yeah, so I think that's about all for now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Director Beamish. Uh, next on my list, I have uh, Roberts Creek, Gary D, and Director Ties. Uh, thank you. Mine will be pretty short. Uh, I was gone for a lot of the period. And uh, uh, so on Tuesday, I went uh, to the uh, presentation uh, or information session for the Agricultural Land Use Inventory at Roberts Creek Hall. And uh, thank you for staff and uh, and the provincial staff there that uh, um, got were there to gather information as well as to inform people as to what they're up to and uh, I think it'd be uh, I think they're working on putting together a a, a, a water management uh, plan um, for agriculture here and uh, I think that'll be a useful tool for us. Um, you going forward with uh, with um, water usage as well as uh, getting some more agricultural data so uh, thank you for doing that and then uh, thank you to uh, director Hiltz uh, for chairing our first public hearing uh, so that was that was good and uh, that's it for me from the creek excellent thank you so much and that's a great segue to go over to Director Hiltz. And I want to find out how was your first public hearing? Not without, no details, but just, you know, how do you feel? And also what else is going on in uh, West Howe Sound? Uh, thanks, Chair Pratt. Um, well, I'll start with the first week, I'll, I'll go. Um, I, the, the public hearing was, was really good. It was, uh, it was fun, uh, uh, great support from staff. I missed my script. But uh, I think everybody, uh, my, my goal of the public hearing was not to leave the room without having said what you said. And everyone, there was no one who did not leave anything that they wanted to say. So that, that was good. I was, I was happy with that. Um, and thank you to Director Ties for uh, you know, running shotgun there. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a good meeting, actually. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, and the agriculture meeting, that, that I also attended that. That was the Meet the Agrologist. And uh, there was an expression of thanks from the... Ministry of Agriculture, people that the SCRD staff were, were extremely cooperative and useful and helpful, and which isn't necessarily the case. They say they, they don't often do these open houses in other regional districts where they've done these inventories. And uh, one of the interesting things about that was that uh, farmers, their crops are not really inventory. It only happens once every five years during the census, so they don't actually know what crops farmers are growing, which I, I found, I thought someone must be tracking this, but it isn't actually tracked. So from this survey, they'll be able to get a, a sample of what crops are being grown on the Sunshine Coast and the, what land is being used, what land isn't being used, and the future water demands. And they're looking at the 20 to 50 year range of what, what the agricultural capabilities on the Sunshine Coast is. So that, that was really interesting. Um, uh, the first week got caught up on a lot of constituency work. Um, and one of the things was just clarifying the difference between the groundwater systems of which West House Sound has a number of them, which are still at stage two, which is separate from the Chapman. So there's still a little bit of confusion over that. Um, and I can attest to the rainfall. Uh, Gibson's Creek is in my backyard. It was nearly dry. It is flowing at kind of um, an October, November level again. So yeah, the, the rainfall was really significant. 
Um, just uh, what else can I say? Um, uh, this Saturday is the uh, Grantham's Wharf Association annual meeting, and uh, it, there is the Grantham's Wharf Jump, which is part of everyone gets to jump off the wharf. But re regrettably, I won't be there this weekend. I'm off post. So, uh, thanks. Thanks very much. You're not getting, you're not jumping off, not getting pushed off, thrown off. Um, that, that's going to come later in the summer, <laughs> okay. I'm told, so I, I still have opportunity. As yeah. long as it's not summer, or as long as it's summer and not winter, right? Well, we'll see about that. Okay, yeah. all right. Okay. I hear polar bear swim. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, over to Director Lamb, and uh, what's going on with you? Um, pretty quiet. Last couple of weeks for me, uh, just participated in the July 1st parade and it was uh, pretty it was pretty well attended I was amazed how many people were around and then and then after just whatever there was just a lot of people around so it was very good to see thank you uh, and over to Alphonstone and director McMahon and area e right I'm going to keep it short I don't have a lot to report on uh, but I would like to tell everybody that the Elphinstone Community Association is holding their annual summer potluck on Saturday at Chaster House from 4 to 9 p.m. You are all welcome. Please bring your own plates and cutlery because this is a zero-waste event, and there will be activities for all ages. And uh, I just wanted to mention um, to Angie that if you happen to run into any capable, ambitious folks over at the Cowichan RD who might want to relocate to the Sunshine Coast, perhaps you'll drop the word. <laughs> <laughs> if you missed that, uh, Donna said they owe us. So, <laughs> okay, well, we'll go over to our other poacher. And, <laughs> and Director Seekers, please. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm going to start with Canada Day. Uh, <laughs> Director Lamb uh, was driving our little tractor, and we had to run to try and keep up with him <laughs> to be able to hand out the flags and tattoos. So we, we ended up with lots of flags and tattoos left over because we couldn't catch them. <laughs> But after, I was uh, in the dunk tank, and unbeknownst to me, my husband arranged with some of my family to come out for the weekend. So they started showing up Thursday night, and Friday night, so my brother was the first one to get up to dunk me, and he did it. <laughs> so some, some of the people in the dunk, dunk tank indicated that they got cold. I didn't get cold because I was going up and down so much, but I do have bruises. <laughs> thank you. Thank you to... Uh, Lori for bringing the little stool because that actually helped getting back up. Uh, one of the things I want to comment on, this is something that came out on Facebook after. Um, on, the, on the Sunshine Coast for Canada Day, we probably had about uh, 40 to 50,000 people. So uh, from as of 2014, the RCMP, whenever they're anticipating a large gathering of people like this, actually have to put a plan in place to deal with any kinds of outbreaks that they could deal with. So we actually had three RCMP officers with um, shotguns or whatever, rifles, whatever, in Seashelt. They were positioned around the community. And some people noticed them for the first time. They've actually been around since 2014, whenever we have a big event. They're out when we have uh, Remembrance Day activities, for example. But there's a 20-page plan that is put together and submitted prior to for the RCMP just to make sure that if something happens, they're ready. So it, people commented and said things like, you know, what's Seashell coming to, you know, whatever. This is the, the RCMP being prepared, and it's something they've done for a number of years. So I sent a thank you to the RCMP for their proactive planning to take care of us. Thankfully, nothing happened, but they were ready. Um, private managed forest. We had, this was Seashell, Council had a meeting with private managed forest people this past week. There is a um, survey, I guess, or an opportunity to comment right now. It's open till Monday, the 22nd. It's open to governments, but it's open to individuals as well. So anybody on the Sunshine Coast, anywhere actually in BC, can comment and either send a letter, um, email, whatever, around with your comments around private managed forest and how it's being managed on the Sunshine Coast. 
Uh, one of the things that we're be, we've been dealing with in Seashelt, um, you've seen it in the paper already, is around the homelessness. So we're, we are working jointly with a number of organizations, RCMP, Rain City, um, the Community Action Team, um, BC, Vancouver Coastal Health, Mental Health Group, et cetera, like on and on and on. There's a, a number of them that we're dealing, we're, we're working with. The Community Action Team has applied for their second year of funding, and they're anticipating to hear any day. It would kick in the beginning of August. But we have issues in Seashell right now around homelessness, and so the District of Seashell Council has, has voted to support um, an outreach by peer, uh, peer workers in Seashell to assist the community with things like needle pickup, um, you know, a, a t a liaising with some of the homelessness, etc. You'll see a, a press release coming out. It's just being drafted right now, but you'll see a press release out. There will be a phone number and an email address available to the community so that if you have issues, concerns, you can call that, and it will actually um, it will be triaged from there to either the peer workers, to bylaw, to RCMP, etc. But it's it's actually going to be um, it's, it's our way of assisting the community in dealing with the issues that have, have ar arisen. Um, I get to do this. Okay, so <laughs> this morning I attended the kickoff of the BC Bike Race segment from Seashelt. And they give out little bells each year and you stand and can, you know, do these. So that's my bell from this year. 550 bikers. They leave in waves of 100. And they, uh, they, they came in last night, got set up at Kinnikinnick Park, and this morning at 8.30, the first wave went off. Every three minutes, they have the next wave, and we're all standing there. Um, I, I got to bring, um, you know, thanks and welcome from District of Seashell on behalf of the Sunshine Coast. Uh, we are looking uh, to work with them next year to see if there's a way we can bring them back downtown. It would work better for us as a community and for them because it's hard for them to get back and forth from Kinnikinnick downtown. They want to go to the restaurant or something like that. It's just not available. So we're going to be in conversation with them. Uh, there were some people from the Sunshine Coast, so I did my little welcome, but then as they took off, they would go, Hi, Donalda. Hi, Dr. So they, they saw me. There are a few people there that I recognized. A um, couple of things that we've done on council. We gave first reading to our cannabis bylaw, so that will be going out to public hearing right now to get some feedback. The Sunshine Coast Housing Society building has been adopted, so they're ready to move forward for building. Um, I mentioned the peer outreach. We are setting up our committees. Deadline for applications is this Friday. We have four committees that are being set up right now, housing, airport, water, and harbor. And um, some people in the audience here have put their names forward for some, and they're continuing to come in. So we're looking to engage the community to come forward and work with us on these issues in Seashell for the betterment of the whole Sunshine Coast. That's my report. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Busy as always. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, so next on our agenda is new business. Uh, we don't have any new business down, but I'll look over to staff to see if there's anything that's come up. And okay. Uh, before, uh, I just want to mention to anybody in the audience, if you want to see any of our upcoming meeting dates, of course, on our website, but there's also the page three of the agenda that has them all listed for anything that's coming up. And please note that we are not meeting in August, unless absolutely necessary, but uh, it'll, <laughs> we're getting to have a, a we're going to have a little bit of a break, but we still have a few more weeks of meetings before that happens. Uh, we will be going in camera after this meeting, but so we'll make that motion to go in camera. We'll adjourn, and then we'll ask for the um, if there's any comments from the public or from the media. What? No, we don't adjourn. Sorry. Um, so we're going to have the motion that the public be excluded from attendance at the meeting in accordance with Section 91ACEI and K of the Community Charter, Personal Information, Vote Identifiable Individual, Labor Relations and Other Employee Relations, the Acquisition, Disposition of expropri Expropriation of Land or Improvements, the Receipt of Advice that is Subject to Solicitor Client of Privilege, and Negotiations and Related Discussions Respecting the Proposed Provision of a Municipal Service, so moved and seconded. All those in favor? Motion carries. Uh, over to 